Let's see if I'm on YouTube now. I'm there. Well, that was easy. It's one little button. <laughs> Thank you, Ali, for that. I must have not selected it when I created this studio. First time amateur here from Vancouver. Joey, you're going to love this one. This is actually started off as a, a photo from Whistler. Um, I think it's Black Mountain. Um, oh, why can't I remember? Anyway, it didn't have the trees in, but they wanted the trees added. So uh, they sent me the photo with the gray mountains, the black mountains, the lake, and then these were um, some hills close by with very little grass. And then we redid it and redid it and eventually added in the, um, the trees. So much fun. I haven't even pulled paint yet. I was so worried about the, the setup because I can't get the iPad to work tonight. So we're gonna pour paint. So if you haven't done it yet, um, get your paints ready. You'll need lots of white. You need lots of white and lots of green. In my sky, I have yellow, red, blue. I would use Stalo blue or ultramarine up here. This is a fire red and then just a bright yellow. I like Stalo blue and green for the water to make it turquoise water. Maybe you have turquoise paint. And then in here, I have my emerald green, uh, sometimes I throw blue or black to make it darker and yellow. So you need red, yellow, blue, green, um, black, and white. Lots of colors. Bring all your colors. Don't hold back. If you want a true um, Vancouver sky, I love the Vancouver sky, especially when it's like a, all those little purples and pinks. The light blues, the light purples, pinks, a little bit of red. Oh, I took the other red. That's okay. I took a different red. That's all right. I did this one before, but was not good at the mountains. Think I will do better now. Yay, Vicky. Well, I just spoke about how people that have done it before and they compare their two paintings. And it's nice to see um, how you've grown over, over the time how much you've learned. Pour in some green, yellow, blue. So blue, red, yellow, a gray for in here. I add a little bit of blue uh, to make a darker gray, black, yellow, blue and green, green, yellow, black for over there. And then whichever other colors you want to use. Yellow, blue, and black. Susan is here from Texas. Sheila is here. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Janice is here from Quebec. Indiana, Donna, welcome, welcome. Uh, oops, kicked myself out of the room. <laughs> Bob near Bons, Boston. Welcome, Barb. Polly from Kentucky. Christy is here watching tonight and will paint tomorrow. Cheers from San Diego. Hi, Mary, Minnesota. I think I'm back. I'm not sure what happened there. <laughs> Am I back? Tell me that you guys can see me. I have no idea what happened there. I was just out. I kicked myself out of the room this time, Ellie. <laughs> Where did you go? 
All right. I'm back. Oh, thank you. <laughs> there you are. Oh my gosh. I love, I hate technology. You guys ready to paint? I have my paints out. This is my canvas. It's an 11 by 14 box canvas. If you're painting on one of these, it's so fun to wrap the picture around the edges. Um, this is our example. Let's see, I can turn it a little bit. Move this a little bit. There we go. Hello, TikTok. <laughs> Is that Sadie watching? Hello, Sadie. All right. So you'll need a bigger brush for the background. You'll need a medium sized brush for the mountains. And then a, I like the full bed brushes for um, the trees. So if you just have three brushes, I'm going to use this one. I might even just use these two. You can maybe have a medium sized one or even a round to draw your mountains. So nothing fancy. Um, just simple brushes. We're going to start off by wetting our brush. So just wet your brush. Rhonda is here. Welcome, welcome. She's reminding us to breathe. I love that. Oh, where is my mouse? There we go. Let's get rid of that. Welcome banner so we can start painting. All right. So wet your brush. Wait, wait. And we're going to start right here. So let's say halfway down your canvas. Halfway mark. We're going to start off with some white paint and then we're going to add a little bit of yellow in it. And then we're going to blend and then we're going to start going into some red. And over here, you'll get like a, a turquoise, sorry, not a turquoise, like a peachy, maybe an orangey color. And then we're going to go into the blue and then you might see a little bit of purple here. This one's very streaky. I don't think that mine would look that like streaky like that i might do a softer blend tonight so we're going to wet our brush i'm going to go into the white paint just white paint and when i pick up paint i just push down with a brush like that push down the bristles open up so the paint goes in between there is no need to scoop a lot of paint when you scoop like that it just flies everywhere you just want to push down with a brush so paint goes in between the bristles halfway mark i just do a little line Turn my brush like that, vertical, and I start applying paint. Lots of white paint. Starting off with some white, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of yellow. There's really white paint there, I promise. Look at it. So you can see it. A little bit of yellow paint on my brush, not too much. Uh, get to know your paints a little bit. Um, you'll know if you need more or less, but you want to start adding that into the white there. I didn't wash my brush. I still have all that white on there. Just little bits of yellow. You can make this as vibrant and colorful as you want it to be, or you can just keep it nice and soft and yellow paint, rub it in, drag it out. Here, I'm going to wash my brush, get rid of the yellow. Tap, tap to dry. More white paint right above this. I'm going to take it right off the canvas. Let's paint all of that. Just white. And don't rush. If you're having fun with the yellow there, don't rush. I'm going to grab very little red. I really don't want that red. I'm changing my red to the, this one's called fire red. The other one's just too pink, too pink for me tonight. Very little red, because the red goes so far. Can you see how little I have? So little. That even feels too much. I'm going to put it right above the yellow and start blending that in here. So slightly going crisscross and then dragging, crisscross a little bit and then dragging. And you'll see that it kind of mixes in with the with the yellow. So I'm starting to get a little bit of a peachy color or an orange. If you find you have too much color, grab paper towel, wipe it all up, and then just go again. Sometimes doing that, you get some really neat colors just by wiping 
down. I don't have a lot of uh, color left on my brush, so I'm just gonna start picking up a little bit of blue. My blue goes really far. So if you have Thalo blue from Saks Truflo, very little, less than you think, very little on my brush. I'm gonna go to the top and start blending that in there. That's a lot of blue. I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna get rid of all that by wiping and then start blending that in. Don't forget to breathe. I did this really fast, but I do that because I don't want it to dry. So take your time if you're doing this, don't rush. And that is how I blend my color. It's still very streaky, like quite the line there. What's up with that? If you don't like that, I would just Use my brush and kind of go crisscross in between, wipe your brush, go crisscross in between, and kind of make it a softer line between the two so it's not such a hard line. And that is my sky. Remember to wrap it around the edges. And I'll give you a little bit of time to do that before we move on. And you can see how little shows up of the yellow. See behind the mountain, there's a little bit of yellow there, a little bit there. Maybe behind the mountain, there's a little. Oh, there's a little behind the tree. But your mountains takes away quite a bit of the yellow. Wash my brush, dry it off. And we just chill for a minute before we do the rest. Debra is here from Langley. Welcome, welcome, my neighbor. <laughs> I'm in Surrey, watching from Honduras. Hi, welcome, welcome. Denise is here, thank you. Can this be recorded? This one will stay um, on Facebook. So this is a video that I leave on for the whole world to enjoy. This one will not, it is in the membership, but this one I won't take off. So if you wanna share this with any groups that you're in, or people who love to paint. This is one of the paintings that I like to keep, keep going, share the love, get everyone to paint. Let's get everyone to the colorful side. Lay from Calgary, welcome, welcome. Chill and breathe, says Rhonda, I love that. I have one question, you use acrylic gesso before you start paint? No. I don't, I buy from uh, Michael's and the canvases are pre-primed. Uh, so I just take them out of the wrapping and I start painting. So um, I don't on these ones add um, gesso to them. Karen is here from Nevada, welcome, welcome. Shirley here from Costa Rica, welcome. All right, how are we doing with the sky? You guys having fun? Anyone doing something different? Uh, if you are ready to move on, just type ready. And then we'll move on to the next step. Um, hi from Mississauga, Canada. Welcome, Safina. Ruth is here from Chetland, BC. Welcome, welcome. I agree, fellow blue goes very far. I know. And still, I keep pouring just way too much. You'd think after all these years I'd learn, but no, nope. I, I use a lot of paint. Aloha from Hawaii. Hello, Sandy. Welcome back. JC says hello to everyone. Ali is ready. Kendra is ready. I love it. Technical difficulties echoes. Oh, Becky, I hope it's not my thing that does that. Amanda, um, in OK Falls and Tammy in Calgary. I love that. They are ready. I love it, love it, love it. All right, I see lots of ready. So I'm gonna start talking about the mountains. You're gonna paint them a light gray and they're gonna be flat. So you see these little shadows and highlights here? We're gonna come do them much later. 
when you paint in the mountains now because the paint is still wet or a little wet mine's getting very near dry um the 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 colors will come through the gray which you want which is all good because it's just the sky reflecting onto the mountains so on this one it's not very clear but they all have like a yellow tint to them which i don't mind sometimes things like that works in your paintings if you're painting layers and some of the bottom colors come through because it could just be light reflecting so if you're painting your mountains and you see the yellow comes through or it's not solid or whatever the background comes through let it come through because it's just the light reflecting right so change brushes you can either use your medium sized brush or your small one i think i'll start drawing with this one we're going to draw out the mountains we're going to do the gray ones first you're going to paint them all gray and then we're going to paint the black ones in front of that um, you can copy my lines or you can just make them up it's up to you to mix the gray i'm going to take a little bit of black paint just a wee bit just a little bit on my tip of my brush right over here i'm going to mix up a light gray and i think that is good you can even go a little bit lighter it's up to you look at look at your sky that you have if you have more vibrant colors not as soft as this go for a darker gray if it's um, very soft and light then go for a light gray right so lighter gray rolling my brush roll it to bring all the bristles together like that take a deep breath in hold your brush a little further back like that and then we're going to draw out the mountains so i'm going to start on this side i've got one little peak a little lower goes down quite a bit and these two are quite high and then back here it actually goes down and then up again try and have a little bit of the yellow show um but this will be my starting point here so i'm going to go a little bit into the red a little bit into the red down a little sharp pick here maybe a little rounded higher pick right into the red maybe i'll go up like that and up like that that's going to be my mountains right to paint it all gray I'm gonna go right up to the um, the yellow, under the yellow here. And I just use the same brush. So when you're painting this and you need to mix more gray paint, it's okay if it's not exactly the same um, color. So just keep painting, uh, mix more gray as you need it. Nothing fancy here. I am just gonna make it a flat gray color. Some of my yellow and red is coming through and I'm all good with that. Nothing fancy here, because we're gonna do more layers on top. You could probably use a bigger brush to paint it in and not <laughs> struggle with a little one, but it already has the paint on it, so I'm gonna continue with it. Nothing fancy. I am kind of putting a little bit of it, like kind of squiggling my brush so that it's not straight lines. See how straight it is here? I don't think those mountains look like that. Make them up. Every time I do this um, with groups of people that's local, they look up the Golden Ears Mountains or somewhere in Banff, um, a view in a certain area, or it's pretty neat. You can look up a mountain range and paint it in. Nothing fancy. Draw it in, paint it gray. And then when we do our black mountains, it's going to pick up some of the gray paint, and we're good with that too. You'll see that it's not a lot of paint. I don't have lots of paint on my um on my canvas. I wish I can there we go. There's not a lot of paint on there. I want to show the reflections with the light on it because then you can see and you can see how the yellow is coming through the mountain oh where am i here 
see all the yellow coming through it's all good when you see that i really enjoy your classes watching now and we'll paint later oh thank you donna i am just watching hello pam welcome Joanna's here from Hong Kong, welcome. And Elizabeth from Philippines, I love that. Hawaii's in the house, Canada, USA, Philippines. Um, so many, it's so neat. A blessed day everyone from Cecil, is it Cecile? Sorry if I say your wrong, name wrong, watching from the Philippines, I love that. Teresa is here from Buffalo. So neat. When we do the Black Mountains, something that quite often happens is that we copy the mountains at the top. And I see it all the time. So um, be mindful when you start drawing out your mountains, not to copy, copy the ones at the top. And with these mountains, the ones that are lower down, they are not as, um, they don't have high peaks like this one. They're a little bit more rounded, a little bit more lower. They don't have all these little peaks and um, points like the one at the, at the top, at the bottom. Little soft there. Hanika in the middle in the middle of a move just watching today. Good luck with the move. Amazing people from all around the world. Frida, you are loved. Oh, thank you, Ruth. Getting my moods to paint again. Oh, I love that, Elizabeth. Thanks. You're welcome. Starting late, just finishing up the back of my sky. Oh, take your time, Kelly. <laughs> Isn't it fun now that you have the supplies at home? Thank you for the hearts, Pam. Oh, awesome, Sandy. All right, so I'm gonna start working on my black mountains. Don't rush, remember, uh, take your time, ask questions if you're a little behind. I'll, I'll talk you through the steps again. Christine, hello. <laughs> you made me stop my sentence, I have to say hello. How are you? Um, when we paint the black, ma oh, sorry, take your time. I post the videos right after, and um, they'll, this one will stay on YouTube and will stay on Facebook, and please share them with your friends. You can always come back and rewatch. Uh, when I post the video afterwards, you'll be able to go back to where you are, but we have a great community here. So if I'm moving along and you're still having fun with the sky, just do that and um, ask questions and I'll help you where I can, or you can just wait for the video which would be, normally we paint about an hour and 15 minutes. Right, so we're gonna do Black Mountain. So I'm gonna stick to this brush or you can use your medium sized brush going, wet my brush, straight into the black paint, rolling my brush in the black paint. When I take water, so from the water in the black paint and then I roll my brush. I just thin out the black paint a little bit. All right, keep track. Try not to copy the top mountains. I normally start a little higher here, go down a little bit. Let's do a little peak here. These will be flat like that. And then a higher peak here. And that's gonna be my mountain down there. Uh, this is the top line. I'm also drawing out the bottom and you'll see over here I create a little um, little corner over here so it looks like there's a bay down there and you're just going to kind of draw the line. It doesn't have to be a straight horizon line. I'm going to kind of go in like this so that I can kind of put these two together. So a little hook there and then just that is going to be my black mountains. See how they don't match the top ones, so keep track of that. And then start painting it black. 
So when I pick up black paint, I start at the top and I drag it down to the mountain, uh, down to the foot of the mountain. And if it picks up the, the gray paint, I kind of just blend it in and drag it down to the bottom. And it's okay if this mountain is lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. So more black paint going up and then just dragging it down. If you're picking up a lot of gray paint, then go grab your hair dryer if you have one or walk around your house just waving around your canvas to make it dry. You guys breathing? Don't forget to breathe. Just trying it out, nothing fancy. And then wash your brush. Patricia, hello from Dunwoody, Georgia. What is the line you put under the mountains? That was just the foot of the mountain. So I dragged it out, a little bit curvy, kind of went in here. So when I paint it blue, it almost looks like there's a bay back there. Nora is here from New York. Hello, Christine. I will paint this as a, at a different time. That's awesome, Peggy. Brought paints on vacation with me. We are going to, <laughs> I love that, Debra. They're going to paint on vacation. I am putting together a little video um, on what to pack and how to pack for vacation. And I'm also putting a video together for painting outdoor, outdoors because the paint dries really fast and there's things to think about, especially if you want to take an easel and all of that. So that would be up probably in mid, closer to the end of May. But that's fun. I love packing my little, I have lots of different art supplies to take with. I have a watercolor set when I take on, go on vacation. Um, I have watercolor pencils with a little journal. I take acrylic paints. It's like one bag of clothing and one black bag of art supplies. It's so fun to sit just on the grass somewhere next to a river and paint. Looking forward to your videos. Thank you. Christine is from Texas. Did I say that? Probably. Indiana. Hello, Linda. Betty is here from Newfoundland. How's it going with the mountains? If you are ready to move on, just type in ready. I know this will take a few minutes, but. It looks as if this mountain goes very, there's a cliff right there. <laughs> oh, Beverly is ready. I love it. I bought a new watercolor set. I have, uh, I have never watercolored, but I am willing to try. It is, it is not as forgiving as acrylic, but I love using it. I like um, using the water to wet out a pattern like a tree or whatever and then go in with the color on top and kind of drop the colors in and letting it dry and then paint on top of that. It's uh, lots of layers. You'll have fun with it. Yes, can't travel without some art supplies, right, Sandy? It's like it doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Hello from Thailand. Thailand's in the house. Hello, welcome, welcome. All right, so. The next thing we're gonna do is use our green to paint in these hills over here. And I do this in two layers. So I'm just gonna do green um, as a base coat and I'm gonna come back and do a second coat on top in a little bit. All right, so big brush. I'm gonna use the other one. And I'm gonna paint in the green hill. So I'm picking up some green paint, just wet my brush. My green is a little um, translucent, so 
it's going to be really bright, but I want to tone it way down in a little bit. So starting up high here, I'm going to lift this up. I'm just going to, it's right under the mountain that I normally do this, a little bit like that. And then on this side, I'm going to go in like this. And then I create a little hill in the front here. Something like that is what you want to do. So you might want to go wider with yours so you have more lake. You want might want to go a little smaller. It's up to you how you want to do it. I'm just going to do one layer of green paint. My paint is a little translucent, so I'm but I'm good with that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to paint in my water and then I'll come back and paint um, more a darker color here and add some highlights. Nothing fancy here. This is just the base coat. We're going to come play with some black and yellow on top to make it um, look. It's going to be more fun, way more fun than, than that. <laughs> After you've done that, we paint in the water. And this time I'm going to use my medium size brush. And you might have a um, a blue that you want to use for the lake. I like mixing up uh, blue and white, my sallow blue and white, and then adding a little green in there to make uh, like a turquoisey color. Right, so blue and white. Oh, this brush is very stiff. That's okay. Some blue, some white. And then I grab a little bit of green in there. Look at that. And I'm going to use that for my lake. But every now and then I'll grab a little more of the blue and white. It's normally never just one color. Right. Very simple to do here. If you do pick up some of the background colors, you can use some paper towel to wipe it up. But try not to pick up um, too much of the black. Go right around. Very flat. This is also flat, just one color down. See all these little waves and white marks? We're going to do that much later. So for now, just, just put the color down. Then we're going to make it a little bit lighter to the front. I didn't do it there, but a little bit lighter here. And I'm okay with picking up the green because it's one of the colors that's in here. And I'm, when you do the second coat here, so if if the area between the two colors here is not perfect, um, when I do that second coat, it's going to be in front, and then I'm going to paint on top of the blue. So don't worry too much if this isn't perfect, the connection between the two. This is just your first coat. Sometimes I speak English deliciously. Just ask questions if you don't understand what I'm saying. I'll forever use the excuse that English is my second language. <laughs> because it is, in case someone is wondering. It really is. Oh, I can't seem to get a connection. Oh, I'm sorry. Normally, the repost is much better. It just depends on the weather, too. I have been doing rock painting now. I like that. What green are you using? Uh, emerald green. I'm using emerald green. Are any of the 20, 20 for 20 watercolors? No, uh, Deborah, I only teach um, acrylic painting. Would you do flower watercolor painting in the future too? Probably not. Um, I do have a little bit of watercolor if you're in one of my courses. Um, it will probably become available later this year, but it's more for our journaling. But I don't normally teach watercolors because I literally just wing it. I can show you what I do, um, but I did a little course on watercolors, but I'm not good at 
I won't say I'm not good, but my style is very different. But I could maybe show something. Watercolors are so, I believe that it's the same as acrylic. You have to play with it, get to know it. Um, the main thing is it's watercolor. You need a lot of water. Cause I, my mom was here last or two years ago and she painted with watercolors like, um, like I would paint with acrylics. Like it was very dry and it, you need a lot of water with watercolors. Right, really flat like that, right? The painting's so flat here. But while this dry, we're gonna work on our mountains. That brush does not wanna come clean. I have so much paint in it. I'm gonna let it soak for a minute. Right. You'll need a round brush to add the shadows and everything to um, to the mountains. So can you see it? There we go. I've got to figure out this camera. So this one works for uh, the shading on the mountains. Very easy to do. What blue am I using? Thalo blue. I use Thalo blue and emerald green and it's from Sex Truflo. I don't unsqueeze my bottles, but there you go. Sex True Flow. And if you're um, in the event, there's a link to my Amazon store and there's a link to this paint. Uh, I think the link is a can Canadian link, but it will convert to the US link. But Sex True Flow from Scholastic. Awesome paints. I've been using it for seven years or eight years already. I love painting with it. All right, so um, small round brush. And we're going to add some highlights to the mountains. You'll see the mountain is kind of split up in two and that's the first step and then you're going to do some you're just going to make marks you're not painting snow we can't turn paint into snow you're making marks and because of what's around it it looks like snow so you split the mountain in half you're going to use your brush and you're going to go Ch -ch -ch, little line you're going to make the noise too Ch -ch -ch. And then you're just going to drag it and add a little bit of white here. And then you're going to take the gray that you mixed, you make it a little darker and you add blue to it and you make a few marks, but you don't want to cover all the gray. You still want some of that gray to show, but with having the white on this side and the dark here, it looks like the light comes from here and it looks like snow and shadows and textures on the mountains. Right. One thing I see a lot is that when you step back from your pa painting, a lot of people do all the snow and the marks at the top and they don't come down to this area here, right above the other mountain. So make sure that you go all the way down and make the marks everywhere. I'm going to show you how I do that. So my small round brush, picking up some white paint. Can't pick up if you don't have any more. Okay, more white paint. I wet my brush all the time. White paint, roll my brush, push down in the paint so it goes in between the bristles like that. Then roll my brush. Little tip. And then split the mountain. Let's do this one here. Split it in half. Like that, like a squiggle line all the way to the black there. And then you kind of just dab with the brush. Hold it a little further back so you don't overthink it. Just kind of move your brush around, add some white snow there. All the way to the bottom. I'm going to do another one. And when you look at it afar, you can already see that it's starting to look like there's some snow on that mountain. I'm going to drag it this way, like that. Dab here. Kind of drag it, just the tip of my brush, like that. Right, I'm gonna mix a little bit of gray. You're gonna do it with all these little mountains, but I wanna show you the gray. I'm adding a little bit of blue to my gray. Mixed a little gray, adding a little bit of blue to it. So it's like a bluish, grayish color. There you go. 
roll my brush. The other side, I'm adding, oh gee, I just made that mountain bigger. My hand's shaky. And then you add a little bit of shadows here. Like that. And that is how you kind of split up your mountain. Right, so line down the middle, little highlights, this side, darker color on that side. I normally go back, see on this one too, I can go back and add just a little bit more white snow right there because the, the tops of the mountains are normally like a very bright white. So you can go back and add that. How's that? <laughs> what do you use as a fixative on your paintings? What's a fixative? I don't understand the question, sorry. I answered the blue, did I? It's thalo blue. Um, lol, you have to make the noise. <laughs> yes, Sandy, swish, swish, swish. And dab, dab, dab. <laughs> all right, I'm washing my brush. I'll do another one. I'm gonna do all the white and then we can go to um, the darker color. So splitting it in half here. And, and this white, you can see how it dries. It's a little see-through. So I'm gonna go back and add more white on top. And I'm gonna add some white here. Split this one. So here we go like that. Don't overthink it. Just, just go and add it in there to preserve the painting. Oh, I see. Um, afterwards, I use a spray sealer. Um, I, I enjoy a spray sealer these days, but when I do a spray, I normally do five to six coats. Other people just do two. I like a lot of um, spray sealer. There are some sealers that you can paint on, but um, I always find that I follow in the painting direction and it takes too long. So I just spray seal them. And, and what brands, whatever is available. I don't have a specific brand. Um, I just make sure that I buy from places where they are new because I have bought from tiny little art stores that never sell. And if you buy an old one, it doesn't dry. And then I've had paintings become sticky and then you can't save it. So make sure that when you buy, you don't buy expired um, sealers. And if you have a painting um, that will be close to, if you, for yourself, um, I like an outdoor sealer for certain, um, especially if I'm painting on wood, I use an outdoor sealer. Does it bleed your painting? I've never experienced bleeding. If you're, if it, um, you can do a test because also depends on the paint that you're using. If you're not using a great quality paint or something that that can um, dissolve again or I don't know, um, reactivate, is that the word? I'm not sure um, it can happen, but I've never had bleeding. I just, I've had the stickiness where the, where the sealer never dries because it was an old, um, sealer that's the only issue i've ever had so now even now when i buy um sealers i'll do a little test on something else just to make sure that it dries i did a pet portrait for someone and after hours of working on it it i couldn't give it to them i had to redo it so yeah all right lots of shading and i feel like my shadow is a little dark here if it's too dark, you can, you just paint over it. So easy peasy. Little shadows. It's nothing fancy. You're just moving the brush. Just little brush strokes. That screen's doing strange things.
then you do exactly the same for the black mountains but you do that in gray not in um not in i find that the white is too bright um, i might go and add here and there a little bit of white so it looks like little ice peaks but um i prefer like a really light gray for on um the black mountains the white is just a little too bright you can try it if you want to but i find it's too bright do you seal all your paintings um if i hang them in the house or if i'm selling them i seal them i do but um all these ones i don't seal them they get stacked <laughs> I looked at my stack in my deck in my um, basement today. I now have three stacks. That's my height, and I need to get rid of them. But I'm at a school tomorrow, so I'm going to check with them if they want it. I just, I don't know. I just have too many, and I can't paint over them. See how I'm just dragging tip of the brush. I mean, hold it at the back here, and then just drag it out. up and just a little i don't do shadows on on the black mountains you can if you want to but i just kind of stick to just the white little bits like that These little highlights make bring these mountains, these little bits to the front a little bit, so it doesn't look like just a flat piece. If you want, you can do a really dark. Let's see what it looks like if I go a little bit darker. You can play with a darker gray if you want to on the other side. On this one, I didn't do any. It's just black. You guys breathing? Don't forget to breathe. <laughs> I use um, Alina's acrylic sealer spray and several light coats. Protect and add shine, yes. Or oh, if I do a very colorful painting, I love a really high gloss um, sealer. And I just bought the, um, what is it called? You pour it on uh, to the canvas. It almost looks like a. It almost looks like glass on top. I cannot speak tonight. Um, anyway, it's really thick, and you make it up. There's two bottles of stuff in there. You mix it up, and I'm gonna do that. I cannot believe I can't remember what it's called. Resin. Thank you, Sandy. Resin. <laughs> They're like, oh, Frida, you're so duh. <laughs> no, you won't think that. <laughs> I think that. Raisin, yes. I love raisin. Is epoxy the same thing as raisin? What is epoxy? It's there's two there's two liquids and I need to mix them. And you mix them really slowly because they'll make bubbles and then you just pour it over the canvas. Still breathing and ready. I love it. All right. So now that we have our mountains, adding the little highlights to the water, I use uh, my big brush. I'll stick to the same brush and a little bit of blue, a little bit of white on the other side. So blue and white. I like having the two colors um, on my brush. And then you're just going to make little marks on the water. Uh, not too much detail way back there, but you can go a little bit bigger closer to you. I just add a little bit. How how wild is the water where you are? Like you can you can decide how you want to do this. Sometimes I've made them, and then I'll go back and I'll I'll cover some of it. It might be a little too much. You just don't want it to be too flat. 
I'm adding some of the, the color from the um, leg on top. So all I do is a few lines like that so that it's not too flat. You guys ready for trees? We're not there yet, but I know some people messaged me, they're nervous for the trees. Trees are so easy. You're gonna love it. All right, so if your green needs a second coat, you can do that. I just paint a second coat and I add a little bit of yellow on top. While it's still wet here, lots of green. I'm picking up some yellow. I need to move that away. I add some yellow and I just kind of brush it on top of this. So now a softer brush stroke, much softer because I don't want the yellow to go away. When you're painting wet on wet, you um, work much softer with your brush strokes because um, you just want it to sit on top, right? I'm gonna do this side, lots of green. If your green is too bright, you can use um, some black or blue to tone it down. Just be careful if you're using craft paint and you're adding black, it can go like grayish color. Just use, just depends on the brand that you're using. More green, I'm picking up some yellow. So I didn't clean my brush, just picking it up. And I'm just gonna go with little brush strokes. There's gonna be trees here. So this is gonna be behind the trees. So I'm not too worried about um, making it too fancy or too realistic. And then bring my heel back. Don't overthink this, just thick layers of paint and the yellow on top. See how thick it sits? And then I just slightly or lightly brush over. And if you find your green too, too bright, just tone it down with um, a little black or a little blue. I don't mind this green tonight. Sometimes I go really dark. Just adding more yellow. Yellow, more black. Still breathing, I love it. Yes, they are the same, thank you. You believe we've been painting for an hour? I do not have something to drink in this room. Let me know when you're ready and then we'll do the trees together. So I like doing my trees with a fulvid brush. If you do not have a fulvid brush, that's okay. Um, your trees will just look slightly different to mine. but you can use the same technique. So same technique, just um, uh, different brushes looks a little different. Even if it's da -da -da -da, frustrating, it is relaxing. I know, painting is so strange, right? It's, it's that want for something, so you want a specific look and you're working hard to get there, that's the frustrating. Or you have an expectation, that's the part. 
but it feels like a little day at the spa when you're done. <laughs> I don't know. It does to me. I think Sissy will disagree. <laughs> But this one's hard too. What's up with my brushes? I can use this one. This one will make good trees. So this is my full bit that I'm going to use for the trees. It's a little bit harder than what I'm normally using, um, but I want to try it. So these are. It's very firm, but it's a. It's a. The bristles is softer. This one is firm, but the bristles is a little harder. I love that you guys are ready. So if you are not ready, don't rush. I'm going to post the video in a few minutes and then you'll be able to go back and see this. I'm going to do the trees on the back of the canvas to show you and then we're going to come to the front um, and do them here. All right, so going to the back of the canvas. I'm going to show you how I do my trees. So I like using a full bit, but you can use a flat brush. You can use, um, try it with a fan brush. I don't know what it will look like. You'll need green paint. I normally mix up a darker green and then I go with a bright green and then you can go with a yellow green. I, oh, sorry, yellow with the green. You can do them in multiple layers. Um, it becomes a lot of fun and then you spend hours painting tr trees. Just a fair warning. All right, so I'm going to make a little bit of a darker green using some black. Um, if this was a fine art school, you'll never hear them say that, but I like using black. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of black and green, and you can see I now have a much darker green than what you saw I painted with earlier. That is so bright, look at that. All right, so much darker green. You're gonna do a line down. Maybe I'll just use black on the back. You do a line down, holding your brush vertical like that. Do a line down. Then turn your brush flat, have it at an angle like this. So don't go in straight and don't be too far down, just slightly angled. I break up my bristles, so bristles together. And then I split it up here to have a bad hair day. Very bad hair day. You can see that they are separated. Barely touching at the top, you're going to do dabs. You're not doing brush strokes, you're just doing dabs. So you're going to go in. I need more paint. Dab, dab, dab. And then you start going out sideways. So dab, dab that way, dab, dab. The, the trunk is always very dense, so keep going back there. And then you start going sideways. And try not to um, make both sides look the same. It's not um, like a fishbone. You don't want something like that. So you want to kind of play with the sides so that it's not the same uh, pattern all the time. As you go further down, you push harder with the brush so that they're bigger and you go wider out. That's not my best work, but that's the idea. To give it a little bit more of a tip, I turn my brush um, vertical like that and then I just dab at the top to give it a little bit more of a tip. Right, gonna be much easier on this side. K-Dog's in the house. <laughs> Hello, Carson. Welcome, welcome. How are you? All right, mixing up more green and black. Why don't you use a fan brush? I've always used this one. A lot of people like a fan brush. I've never, I've never done one in a fan brush. All right, so I um, have my paint on. Choose where you want them to be. I have a tall one here, a so shorter one here, one there, and one up here. So drag your lines out. I'll do this one first, right here, like that. I want to go right there, right off the canvas. Break up the bristles, separate them a little bit angled like that. 
barely touching at the top. When I get to the black, you're hardly going to see it, but that's why I use the lighter colors on top to bring it out again. So dab, 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 go a little wider. Because my canvas is not dry, it's going to pick up some of this color, but I'm okay with that. To bring this, um, to give it more of a tip, I turn my brush this way and then I just dab to give it a little bit more of a tip. I'm going to go with some yellow and green on top. And just, it's a much lighter dab. And then I just add a little bit more color to my trees. You can see the yellow in there. I would come back and do these a little bit more when it's drier. I'll do one more. I need more yellow and I need, I don't need more green. Right. Darker green, line down. A little black and green. Dab, dab, dab. Center is very dense. And then I start going out, have it angled, lighter dabs at the top. And as I go further down, and I'll show you what it looks like up close. As I go further down, I um, push a little harder with the brush so that the branches look a little bigger. And here it disappears into the mountain. But when I go with the yellow on top, it just brings them to the front again. And that is how you do your trees. I do feel like I need to dry my canvas before I can get the trees to look the way that I want them to. To give it the tip, I turn my brush this way. Let's break up the bristles. Just dab, dab, dab at the top. And then I'm going to do one more here. But that's your trees. And you can do as many as you want. I don't put them on top of the heels here. They kind of come all the way down as if they're closer to me. And the trees are um, way, uh, sorry, the hills are way in the back. Can you use a fun brush, fan brush? Yes, you can. I love all the answers. Yes, you can. <laughs> um, from Australia, just having a look. In lunch break, we'll have to go tonight. Yes, Heather, it will be there for you. Hi, everyone. I'm watching and we'll paint tomorrow. Hello, Susan. Lynn is here from Quebec. It's so neat to see everyone. All right, so I'm going to go again and do another one. A little black. A little green. I love this color that it makes the um, the emerald green and the black. I don't know how much you can see, but it's a really, really dark green. It's very neat. And then with the yellow, with it, it's more, it's more a natural color. Right, gonna go right here. Breaking up the bristles, start dabbing. Oops, right off the canvas. Give it a little tip and going in with some yellow. Way more yellow. Breaking up the bristles. When you do the yellow on top, it's a much lighter um, dab. Not as heavy, because you still want to see the darker color. But 
There you go. I'll show that one up close. And that, my friends, is your painting for tonight. Don't stop because I'm stopping here. Um, I'm going to post the video. Do as many trees as you want to. I think I'm going to dry this and quickly do some more trees. And then I will see you next week. I will be back at 6 p.m. next week. Um, I think only the following week I'll be back at 12.30 in the day. So have a great night. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to post a selfie, so please come and share. If you haven't done this before, on my Facebook page, I do a little selfie. Everyone else comes and posts their photos, and we can all see how different um, our paintings are. It's so fun. I hope that this was relaxing and that you learned something, met some awesome people, and I'll see you guys next week. Good night.